Everyone always wonders who is the GOAT. It's like one of the most popular debates of all time. Is it LeBron, MJ? No, stupid. It's 2 4 light arm Kobe, left hand light Ginobili, man. Stop playing with us. But today we're going to be talking about the greatest rapper of all time. Is it an OG like Tupac, Nas, Jay Z? Or is it someone new like J. Cole, Drake, or Kanye? No. It's this 5'7 Korean boy band member that doesn't flex about when he stands on his money how he gains two feet. So why is this dude <laughs> the GOAT? Oh wait, I already answered that. Now don't get me wrong, I love being flexed on by grown men. I'm a rice gum fan. Wait, that sounds sus as hell. Big pause, big pause, big pause. I'm not just going to talk about how BTS and Sugar has changed my life because of the deep mental health issues that they talk about, because it hasn't, okay? No music has ever changed my life. I doubt any music will ever change my life. I just like reacting to it and getting overly excited for no reason and listening to it when I go to the gym or walk my dog. But to disregard the fact that deeply profound lyrics that 90% of his audience don't actually understand supposedly changed the life of millions of teenage girls and a handful of 73 year old men, <laughs> that's not a joke. Express the mourning that everyone in the world but to disregard the topics they are talking about is to disregard people forcing positive change in a somewhat negative genre such as hip-hop. I know BTS is K-pop, but August D. Sugar by himself is hip-hop. Well, technically, apparently, it's K-hip-hop, but it's the same thing. Hip-hop and rap in the days before I was a fetus used to be about racism and telling stories that often involve gang violence that strive to force change. But as hip-hop and rap became more mainstream, the beats, hooks, flows stopped focusing on the lyricism and story instead choosing to talk about what most people would consider flexing. But fans, including myself, see this as motivation and inspirational lyrics about how they reached the pinnacle of fame and riches and about how much better they are living than everyone else. As shallow as it is, everyone wants to be the best and listening to Lil Uzi talk about how much taller he gets standing on his money every single song and against Uzi's will standing in his tiny shoes to taste a feeling of what tremendous success and imagine what it would be like to experience and obtain his ridiculous wealth. Or now they just sing about God's plan and how to move your feet to the twisty slide. If I'm being honest, these songs could be in Korean and it wouldn't make a difference because all I remember is that these hooks are catchy and I don't remember anything else about the song or what they're about. Sugar August D generally talks about the opposite of mainstream hip-hop trends because he's a part of BTS and to fit the brand that Big Hit Entertainment built for BTS and Sugar. He is forced to rap about more philosophical and positive topics instead of, you know, just general violence and murder and money, all that kind of stuff. When he does want to make the ultimate flex track, such as Deji Tar, instead of flexing about how Sugar came up from a struggle, not necessarily growing up in poverty and becoming rich overnight because he was unimaginable, unmatched musical talent, instead he crafts a masterpiece of Korean history, culture, and folklore to make a song where the new Sugar starts a Deji Tar to overthrow the old King Sugar and is able to use a variety of metaphors and similes to metaphorically talk about his success where every lyric, lyric has multiple meanings and the entire song conveys a story rich in culture and history. Most of the time when Sugar does rap, not August D on BTS tracks and albums, the lyrics fit the story of the album. For example, in Map of Souls 7, an album that is supposed to reflect on the ups and downs of the band's seven years as they go into to another seven year contract as well as their search for their find their real selves an interesting concept that lots of their younger audience can relate to as they try find out who they are and who they want to be in my 100 factual opinion the song that best fits this theme is sugar's solo interlude shadow where sugar tells us about his ambitions appealing to that mainstream market that wants to be wants an inspirational story about how sugar wants to be the best he wants to be famous he wants to be rich but he also talks about how he got these things and how it's changed his life negatively. Because when Yoongi, Sugar's real name, walks into a crowd, they don't recognize him because they're focused on Sugar and his persona. Wait, how 
is that supposed to be relatable? We're not all famous. In the song Shadow, in the song, he's having a rap battle with his shadow, representing how his persona he gives off to the outside world is not really him. So he can fit an image to be liked. Obviously, in his case, it's more extreme than other people. But to an extent, most people act a little bit different than they would like to so that they can be liked. He also talks a lot about how his persona and shadow want different things in a very philosophical manner that is reinforced by many visual symbolisms in the music video. No different to Deji Tao or any other video Sugar appears in. In this same song, an example is this door that reference another artwork that pretty much means he loses a bit of himself with every time he goes through. Translating that in normal terms means every time he goes outside and wishes to be liked, he loses a part of his true identity. Anyway, we're not gonna go through and break down all of his music too deeply in the intro of the video. If you want, I recommend just checking out a breakdown video of Dejita in Interlude Shadow. It's gonna give you way more information because there's a lot of things in these. Before we really start talking about why Sugar is the go, I need to tell you about kpopshop.com where you can get all kinds of K-pop merch at cheap price. So use my link in the description if you want to buy anything, please thank you. Also hit that like subscribe button and let's get into the video. Before we really deep dive into Sugar's musical ability, I think it's important that I tell you why I like him so much. As being the GOAT of hip hop is about more than just the music, as there are thousands of songs that sound like sicko mode, but there is only one sicko mode because there's only one Travis Scott. I like being me, but that said, there is two people I would swap lives with at an instant. That used to be LeBron and Logan Paul. Now it's LeBron and Jake Paul. <laughs> nah, I'm kidding, <laughs> but not about the Logan Paul thing. But now it's LeBron and Sugar. LeBron is just the perfect human being, and if you wouldn't swap lives with him, you're either Bill Gates or don't know who LeBron is. But Sugar has to be one of the most interesting people I know of. Now, I know this might sound like a bit of a stretch, but I feel like I'm a lot like Sugar. If Sugar was untalented, not a genius, a white boy from Australia that's significantly less attractive, not famous and not rich, that can't sing, rap, dance, or has any style whatsoever. Bro, <laughs> what's wrong with my script? I'm nothing like him. But Sugar, similar to me, has multiple personality slash personas that he uses in different situations, but when alone, prefers to work on things in silence, and he seems like someone that would per be perfectly fine with not talking to anyone for a long period of time. So in other words, I think we're both borderline sociopaths. But but still doesn't mind being in a group of people he is close to. He is not overly funny all the time, but can make a good joke if the timing is right. He definitely doesn't care about the outside opinion as long as he is the, on the right path. And all that is the reason why I relate to Sugar so much. Because in my not humble opinion, that's pretty much how I would describe myself as well. Now, obviously, all those opinions were formed of a limited amount of clips I've seen on the internet. And as I don't know the guy in real life, that's really just speculation. Why I took Logan Paul off the list of people I would switch lives with is Logan Paul's entire career is based off how people like him. So if he's not liked or entertaining, he is unsuccessful. Artists and athletes can really do whatever they want as long as people enjoy listening or watching them play and perform. They can do whatever they want. That's why rappers and athletes seem like chill, cool people that don't really care. While someone like Logan Paul has to make it seem like he overly cares all the time. Sugar strikes a balance straight in the middle. I used to think the makeup and ego thing was cringe and weird but other than just appealing to their teenage girl audience and turning them into the equivalent of tier 3 Pokemon subs for BTS the exaggeration of it is almost a big middle figure to this dude <laughs> He pretty much just called them gay sissies and that they could never make real hip hop. As much as I cringe to say it, them being cute adds like a four dimensional character to them where you never really know what you're gonna get. Where they could be like cool, chill, they could be cringe, like, like you don't really know. And somehow this mix of personalities and personas don't even make them seem fake. In fact, a lot of people say they're the most genuine people on the planet. And the whole being cute thing doesn't even really hurt his reputation as an absolute badass because the guy learned how to 
sword dance in like four days. Like, bro, he's like a full ninja. He knows how to sword dance and he learned how to do it in four days. But back to the whole makeup thing. As I said, I thought it was weird and cringe that a grown man, especially someone with August D's rap persona, would wear makeup and dye his hair abstract colors. But it's really just to appeal to his target demographic and almost shows that he doesn't care about being the hardest dude, which almost makes him harder because he straight up just doesn't care. I guarantee you, Travis Scott and Takashi 6 9 would be too afraid to walk outside with a full face of makeup. Like, they would, they would be too scared. Takashi 6 9 is kind of a bad example, but you get my point. Now, moving on to Sugar's actual rap and musical ability. I think we instantly have to give Sugar bonus points for being a goaded level producer, okay? Many, producing many of BTS top beats. Don't forget, BTS is the number one selling artist right now. That's pretty impressive to be the producer for a number one selling artist. Especially when a lot of rappers these days just turn up to the studios and, you know, they might just rap over the beat or sometimes they're just given lyrics to rap over to the beat and have real no creative process. You know, they might go through a couple beats that they're given and then they just instantly leave as soon as they're done, leaving other people to mix and master it. Sugar does it all though. Sugar does it all. I'm not a blind and ignorant fan. No doubt Sugar has lots of help. They are working for a giant entertainment company. But for what I believe, he probably writes most of his lyrics. I know RM helps him write his English lyrics. But I don't really care if you write your lyrics. It's just bonus points if you do. The ultimate bonus points come from the fact he raps in three different languages, however. He can rap in English and Japanese at an elite level, which is absolutely insane considering they're not actually even his native languages. And then obviously he's goaded in Korean because that's his native language. You know, it's goaded when you're like, you don't even have to know what he's saying just to know it sounds fire. Bonus points aside, you only need to listen to Deji Ta to recognize Sugar's versatility. He flexes how he can rap with any flow on the same beat. This creates a long song that is engaging. It feels like it's under a minute. Popular kids' vlogs channels such as Logan Paul do the same thing. Short scenes that create a video that even if you don't like it, is still highly engaging. The same effect is often often achieved in bands as they can switch members and to make a highly engaging song as they all use like a different kind of style on the beat. Sugar is able to easily achieve the same effect by himself by using a range of flows and at the same time changing languages between English and Korean. His ability to drastically switch his flow gives him an edge in old school rap artists such as Naz and Tupac who often stick to the same kind of flow such in the 80s and 90s where the boombox beats were super Super popular. These beats were nowhere near as catchy or melodic or abstract, instead keeping most flows simple and focusing on profound lyricism and rhyme schemes. This aspect of rap is said to be lost in today's area of hip hop. Sugar keeps the meaningful, powerful, and thoughtful lyricism that is lost in today's hip hop. Artists such as Drake that are hated on by old school hip hop fans because of their lack of lyricism often find a catchy couple of word hooks and parts that almost act as a secondary hook, repeating the same lyrics over and over again, sacrificing lyricism for the most catchy song possible. Sugar achieves these same catchy simple hooks without losing the meaning. For example, Tussie Sly, God's Plan, Hotline Bling, etc. don't really mean anything. They kind of relate to the song, but it doesn't really mean anything. To refer back to Deji Ta, the simple hook, Deji Ta, Deji Ta, Play It Loud, Deji Ta. By the way, Play It Loud is in Korean, so it actually doesn't say play it loud. That's just what it means. It, it rhymes with Deji Ta. But um, it does mean something. It links to the history of the song and the music video as Deji Ta is a genre of Korean traditional music consisting of military music before they went to war. So the one word hook represents Sugar going to war to overthrow the current king so that they want to play it loud to hype up his army. Artists like Drake normally use simple catchy words to make the songs more memorable. However, Sugar, just like everyone, Eminem instead uses crazy memorable flows that flex their speed, delivery, and rhyme schemes. And Sugar can compete with the best when it comes to this. Sugar is able to use the same mumble flows that people like Gunna use. However, if you listen to any Sugar song, you'll recognize that the mumble sounds a little bit different. As his delivery is much more clear, so you actually kind of know what he's saying, but it still has that kind of clean mumble effect. Um, and his lyrics stay 
meaningful. His lyrics don't just start mumbling on about anything that doesn't really matter. His lyrics continue to be profound, which if you compare to someone like uh, Lil Xanax, you know what I'm saying? Like, once he goes into the mumble flow, the song doesn't mean anything anymore. After listening to all this, I'm sure you get it. Sugar has the best of all worlds. This is probably because he is an actual producer and understands how current beats work and is able to keep up to date with all the trends. He also is able to access Big Hit Entertainment's variety of resources and no doubt has learned from his other six musically talented members that he has been living with for his entire adult life. Some rappers might be slightly better than Sugar at one aspect, but no one is better than Sugar in two things. And if they are, it's so slightly it barely matters. He is an elite at every facet of making a hip hop song, which shows his unmatched talent and dedication to his craft. As I talked about at the start of the video, being the GOAT or the greatest of all time isn't just about how good your music is. A lot of people can make good music, but it's about the impact people have. Sugar is a part of BTS, which is which is unarguably one of the most influential music groups, or even compared to an individual in a long time. Again, I personally don't really care about anything other than the music, but other people do, so I'm going to talk about it. BTS has so many feats for mental health advocation, so many that I'm not even going to bother talking about all the things that they have done. I'm sure we all know how much they have impacted people to the point where people become crazy stalker cultists that will painfully lynch you and your entire family because you said Jimin's hair is one strand out of place. BTS is at the fourth front of pushing for racial equality to the point where I think they're almost promoting racism by taking cultural appropriation to the next level. Regardless of what I think, they strive to educate themselves and their fans on race-based topics for all races. BTS and ARMY are also known for being incredibly generous to lots of charities, not just making donations themselves, but inspiring their audience to make donations themselves. Recently donating $1 million to coronavirus relief funds, but more amazingly inspired fans to donate ticket refunds to the coronavirus relief as well. Sugar also donated 80k personally. Um, they have donated lots of money between all members um, for lots of different causes. So I'll leave a link in the description if you want to see all their donations. And as I said, more amazingly is that almost every time they donate, their donations by fans almost match the donations from the rich artists. I think this shows BTS's power to drive change, which is something that separates separates good artists from goats. What else separates Sugar from your average musician is his attention to make the visuals and the experience of watching his music entertaining and or meaningful. The average rap video consists of party scenes twerking, twerking and the rapper standing there and lip syncing. Sugar is an elite dancer adding another art form that separates him from everyone else and guess what? Look at Dejita and the video a whole, has a whole story to the point where it's almost a movie. The Baby Rockstar is the closest thing to a Sugar or BTS level video to the point where it's more like a movie. The difference is the Baby's music video really doesn't have anything to do with the actual song. It's cool, it's like a movie, you know what I'm saying? He's going out and fighting zombies, but as I said, it doesn't really have anything to do with the song. It's a lack of symbolism that Sugar or BTS videos have. Even when a sugar video isn't a movie, there is still lots of references to other artworks, ideas, philosophies, etc. This just doesn't exist in normal hip hop. So, is sugar the goat of hip hop? Probably not. <laughs> like, don't get me wrong, I think he should be up there. Is he good? Yes, but I don't think there really needs to be a goat when it comes to music. I love talk about who the goat of basketball is, but that's because it's a sport where they're competing against each other and there is a clear winner. Music does doesn't have that. It doesn't matter. Sugar won't ever be as big and as mainstream in the hip hop genre as a rapper that speaks all English because the hip hop genre consists of mainly English speaking fans. Sugar can just do his thing in BTS, go crazy as August D, but don't get me wrong, Sugar is a beast and taught me not to judge people at all. So just don't be this guy. Also, that's a complete lie. I'm still going to judge everyone and everything. It's human nature, so go subscribe to hear my hot takes in my reaction videos.